I am Captain Spawn, and this is day 311 of Spawn Year. Why does an actor act? Why does a diver dive? Why does a reviewer review? Many of us have inherent passions we are driven to pursue for no other discernible reason than we are compelled. It is who we are, what we are. Are we born with a predisposition to pursue our respective interests? Is destiny at play in our seemingly God-given talents? Or is it simply our unique experiences that shape us into actors or divers or reviewers? Or even killers? When we cannot put our finger on exactly why a person is consumed by art or construction or memorizing pi to the 6,000th decimal place, we think of it as a harmless, fascinating existential quandary. But if a person is predisposed naturally to do something that creates chaos, something considered morally despicable, we deem that person disturbed, damaged, mentally unstable. And certainly, by and large, people who murder or torture without cause seem to be unhinged, either chemically or emotionally, due to traumatic circumstances. But what if you were simply born to create chaos? What if that was your natural function in life? All your wiring was rigged for that outcome. Could you really be held responsible for doing what you were hardwired to do? But then, if you had no potential to grow beyond that programming and choose not to live for chaos, could you even be considered a person at all? This issue asked that question of Ab and Zab and of Spawn himself. And I have to say, I've gone from liking an issue despite itself yesterday to solid, eh, not bad, here. This one seems to really be about something, and it's deliberately exploring that nature versus free will theme through a coherent narrative. Yet, I'm praising the comic for actually presenting a series of events I can follow and for attempting to have a sense of purpose. Not a resounding endorsement, but certainly a huge step forward for this book. We're still in aftermath territory, as Spawn is bumping into stranded demons or angels each issue, trying to regain dominance or bring reinforcements from their respective realm. A world of people who experience the apocalypse and know for certain that heaven and hell exist but are cut off from them is potentially fascinating. This issue begins to explore people coping with and interpreting that reality in various ways. Here, there's an evangelical church that runs a hell house and they want to keep it going despite having already been through the end times. The minister and his followers are in denial, clinging to the idea that God was testing them and that they need to continue preparing for the real apocalypse. So they're working on building an even scarier hell house, a place to warn people of the reality of sin and what will happen to them if they don't repent and turn toward God. What I like about this story is how rattled these believers are. They used to be totally solid in their beliefs and their extreme methods of trying to convert others to their way of thinking. But now they've been through the final days, more or less just what they preached would happen, and it didn't turn out the way it was supposed to. And now they're very uncertain, just doing what they've always done because their lives have no purpose without their faith. So Ab and Zab easily manipulate them into allowing them to transform their building into a literal hellhouse under the pretense of creating something that will profoundly affect people even after they've already been through the end of the world and affect them it does. Haberlin delivers some truly nightmarish imagery that really elevates the material and brings it a step closer to the provocative and spine-chilling horror comic it's been playing at for so long. And before you can say abracazabra, Spawn shows up out of nowhere. I have no idea how he knew what was going on or where the two wolves in tattooed sheep's clothing were. As with Clown and Zira, he plans to dispatch of the leftover otherworldly riffraff who implore him to show mercy because they're simply doing what opener demons do and despite their promise to spawn all those issues ago to behave themselves, they can't help but be what they are. The very same point Spawn makes to Nyx earlier in the issue when she attempts to mystically heal his face and make him look like Al Simmons again regardless of what form he may have had before, and Lord knows he's been so many different versions of himself, it's hard to keep track of them all, 
He is a monster, both physically and figuratively, and nothing can change that. I am so tired of these comics questioning and redefining Spawn's identity that it's hard to appreciate it when it's handled well. But there's some potential in exploring that here, though I'm not expecting much by the end. I have read plenty of good first issues to ultimately dismal overall arcs. At the end cliffhanger, as I might have expected, Spawn finds himself face to face with a hellish recreation of Wanda. It's hard to feel like I'm not being constantly banged over the head with that revelation about Al causing a miscarriage on purpose. The haunting Wanda recreation has been done to death, and it only serves to remind me how much more interesting an actual confrontation with the genuine article would have been. I would also like this threat of dealing with demons trapped on Earth more if Spawn was out looking for them. They seem to mostly appear when they do because that's the order they're in on Hind's list. But I suppose it's always been too much to ask for stories in which Spawn intentionally tries to accomplish something. I'm glad Nyx is still around and her presence is doing a lot to focus the story in a slightly more coherent direction. Well, I suppose I too am continuing to do what I've always been compelled to do. Criticize, critique, review stories. I've been forced to continue in that activity since I've arrived here 10 months ago, and after everything I've been through, I only hope to prove when I return home that my passion will no longer consume me, and that I have the capacity to be more than I am. Signed, Captain Spawn.